What's up, everybody? It's your good friend, Lukey, and don't judge my hairline. I am not that. ITR Boxing has recently started a channel on OF.TV. Go there and check out some of our exclusive documentaries. I promise, not just as my mom like them, you will too. Okay, so guys, um, let's talk Tony Yoka versus um, Carlos Takam. As I said before, it was really weird. So let me set the stage. Tony Yoka... <laughs> 2016 Olympic gold medalist out of Paris. Um, he fought Tarlos to calm, which uh, this is coming on the heels of losing to Martin Bacoli. If you guys didn't watch this, I wouldn't blame you because it was on in the afternoon and it's not really outstanding must see TV watching, but it, somebody tell me if I'm wrong. Carlos to is basically a hand selected opponent for Tony Yoka to get a win after losing to Bacoli. And Dewey Cooper came up with a great game plan for, um to calm it's but awesome. to calm basically bullied and beat tony yoka who looked like he had no answer for a right hand is tony yoka the modern day oddly harrison he's pretty close man and like to be honest with you i mean we've talked about this lukey right like anthony joshua as a as in, in some ways is overrated and then in other ways is extremely underrated and I think one of those ways is that people have talked about Anthony Joshua like he's Tony Yoka, but he handled Carlos Takam very easily. Won every second of the fight, had very minimal challenges, whereas Takam takes to you know Yoka and kind of bullies him around and and makes him look like a, an amateur fighter, really. Um, so yeah, I think it's a, it. I don't think he's Audley Harrison because you he doesn't just get knocked out all the time, but. He's he's definitely like an Olympic level fighter that's underperforming, and I also think Takam is just a good fighter that's been in with a lot of world class. I mean, he's like a legit, you know, contender. He's a solid guy, but if you're main eventing cards and you're Olympic gold medalist, this is the type of guy that the fans it's expect the you to beat. You're supposed to look like what Joshua looked like. Stacks, did you even bother watching this one? No, or I, I I watched it, and you know, it's just like. That style, that amateur style, is is what he showed yesterday. It's, it's like nothing. There was no type of improvement from his from his loss. You know, I thought I thought he was going to go in and steamroll to come. I actually thought he was going to stop him, and it's just like he. It was such a lackluster performance. It was like he was somewhere else. Like he wasn't in that boxing ring. You know, I mean, he was doing just enough to survive, and it was it was ugly. It, it was it was it was ugly. There was. He had no answers. You know, his his combinations weren't doing anything. He really couldn't set the pace. He couldn't use his his size. There was no lateral movement. He wasn't popping his jab. There was just so much that he wasn't doing. Like, so it was taller. Yeah, it was it was weird, man. I, it was it was just it was weird and Takam went in there and and he and he beat him, you know, and it, it looks like maybe and Takam might have been fighting with a hurt arm. It looked like because at the end he really grimaced when the ref grabbed his arm to raise a raise his arm, and Dewey Cooper's like, "No, raise his other arm." So he he could have been fighting maybe more than half the fight with with one arm and still beat Yoka, you know. Well, I think so that was, you nailed it on the head, Stacks. My biggest frustration with Yoka was if you're <laughs> gonna have an amateur style, you got to pop that jab and keep that app jab going. If you're gonna fight moving and tall and jabby and not physical. It's the same – to me, I saw Yoka and Harrison as the same fighter and same fight. They didn't have the volume to keep a guy at the end of their punches. Yep. If you're going to play the move around, jab a guy game, you got to double their output. You've got to really, really make them uncomfortable to come forward. In both the Tim Zoo and the uh, Yoka to calm fight, both guys made the pressure fighter very comfortable closing distance. No, no pushback at all. That was the main thing, dude. I'm, I'm telling you, 30 seconds into the, the, the Zoo Harrison fight, I was like, well, he's already, he's giving up ground, and it felt like Yoka was doing that too, and he just wasn't willing to, you know, let go of a, of a counter shot or, or, or give, you know, to calm some reason to not just walk in and bully him and, and push him around. Which I was surprised like him too, because I watched his fight with. Um, who was the, the Eastern European kid? Milos. Peter, uh, I think Peter Milos. Hey, you're a better man than me because I definitely did not see that fight. It, it, was, <laughs> before, it was before the Bacoli fight. And I remember watching it. The guy he was fighting was pretty good. He had decent technique, but he had that Joshua thing where he was a little stiff. So I'm like, yo, I'm wondering if he's got 
some of the other intangibles that Joshua has that's gotten him to this level, and I, it turns out he doesn't. I think the Bacoli fight, too, not to say you look back. Bacoli is one of these physical fighters who really could ruin a prospect. And I think it's hard for me to not think that Bacoli's done long-term damage to Yoka in terms of confidence, belief in himself in the ring, and probably his long-term health, because that was a very brutal one-sided fight that when I think back on, probably could have been stopped like at some point in that fight to like stop some of that damage. Yeah, I didn't I didn't watch that fight with McCullough, so I can't. I mean it, these guys gotta step their game up. They gotta win bigger fights, get on the platform. Any other fights on this card, Lauren Price gotta win. I think she's gonna be a star. Um Dan Aziz won. I don't really think he's gonna be a star. I think he's gonna be a solid contender. Uh, anything notable for people that are just going to their job site the next couple of days and have us on their podcast system? Yeah. And like uh, you're, the guy just uh, went up and gave the comment that he's really regressed mentally. Yeah. As a fighter, it looks like Yoka has regressed mentally. Fearsome to throw anything. That that nails it right there. You know, that, that hit the nail on the head right there. Fearsome to throw anything. It's almost as if he didn't want to get caught. He didn't want to take a beating where he he didn't throw you know and it wasn't necessarily that he was fighting defensively it's just he didn't he wasn't throwing anything and that's my guy ben blackwell good friend of mine shout out ben from the uk coming in just to yeah. contribute ben is one of the best people in boxing he's someone i look to for knowledge so ben jumping in there with as you'd expect from a ben blackwell comment makes a lot of sense right that's makes what we've learned sense. about exactly ben, when it's ben speaks it makes sense this is one thing I'm curious about both of your opinions. Like you said, both Yoka and Harrison lacking the activity, lacking the, you know, when you box like that, you got to give somebody a reason to not walk in. For both of them, like, is it physical or mental? Because when I'm watching, when I'm watching Yoka, it looks mental to me. When I'm watching Harrison, it looks physical. But I maybe both. Mental, but. I think and I think. Cool. I think you nailed that on the head as well. I think with with Yoka, it is mental. I think because of the fact that, you know, I, I've had my ass kicked before. You know, I'm not saying I'm a, a boxer. I've been in that ring or, or had my ass kicked at that level. But I've been knocked out. I, I've been beat up a few times in the streets. And, and you always remember that, man. You always – that stays in the back of your head. And once you get hit again and, you know, you're ever in a fight again, like, that stays in your head. So I'm sure with Yoka – you know, after after coming off of that loss and getting the beat, getting beat down the way he did, I'm sure that's that's mentally in his head. Like, you know, am I gonna am I gonna be able to to contend? Am I gonna be able to be a world contender? How's this? Is this guy gonna hurt me? You know, so I'm sure we're sitting there because, you know, I actually seen it in, in Anthony Joshua too. You know, after that first Reese fight, the second and the second Reese fight, you know, he stayed on that back foot. He never really engaged. You know, and 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 sometimes I, I do think it's mental. Where with Harrison. You know, like I had said earlier, with Father Time, and you start getting up there in age, and you've been in those wars, and you've been in those battles. You know, maybe it's just like it's not necessarily mental, but you just don't want to to be in one of those physical fights. You know, I mean, you you know what you got to do, but sometimes you just can't pull that trigger to to the box and, and and do what you need to, and then you get hit, and it turns into a physical fight, and, and you're not liking it too much. And I don't think it's necessarily so much mental i'm sure it plays a part in it but i think with with yoka a lot of it is just just not gaining that confidence you know like luke yeah. said to calm was handpicked for him to win and to calm didn't come in to lay down you know to calm actually gave him a fight and it's not the fight that i think yoka and his team were looking for so mentally yeah i do think a lot of it was it's that it fight was a that you as opposed to fighting to win. And sometimes when you're fighting just to not get hit, you actually wind up getting hit because the other yeah. guy has no incentive to not throw. You know, yeah, and it's exactly. like that's what Tony was both both Tonys were doing. Yeah. A tale of two Tonys. That's a story right there. The yeah. tale of two Tonys. The tale of two Tonys, bro. Um Tony's had a rough weekend. <laughs> yeah, it was not good to be Tony. Someone it was good. Now if you enjoyed this video and you want to continue to see videos like this one. Go to OnlyFans.com slash ITRboxing. We have a ton of content there, and it's really, really easy to see weekly, never-before-seen videos, some editorials in video form. We have a ton of content that's exclusively over there, 
And two times a month, we're bringing you full-length documentaries or quarter-length, about 15 to 20-minute documentaries for our OnlyFans. So really go check it out and see what all the buzz is about.